Kia ora, g'day, I'm Philip Duncan from Weatherwatch TV on YouTube with your Climate Watch update for the month of August, tracking the big highs, the big lows, the wind, the calm, temperature changes, and of course, your upcoming rainfall. Let's kick off on the August 1st air pressure map, the bright shaded areas, high pressure. So we're kicking off August with a very powerful area of high pressure. Now in Australia, this will gradually drift eastwards and that's gonna create some windy weather in New South Wales and some rain. We'll talk about that in a split second. But the high pressure belt for the first week is heading to New Zealand. So we've got frosts in New Zealand this weekend going up to the winterless north. And we've got uh, calmer conditions, drier skies following the stormy weather we've had lately. In Australia, high pressure also moving eastwards in these areas that have had some very stormy weather in recent weeks. But there are a couple of things going on here. One, there's a colder airflow coming through for the southeast corner, at least for the first few days of August, going into the weekend, maybe the very start of next week, as that high comes in and locks in the colder southerlies that you've just had. The other feature, low pressure. It's very hard to see, but there is some low pressure here on the border of New South Wales and Queensland, and that moves out to sea over the weekend, forms a new low, and that will deepen and create strong winds between the low and that high that's tracking along to the south. So severe weather risks around New South Wales. Check out our Australia-only forecast that we just put out on Thursday. That covers all of that in detail. Go to the other side of Australia, and in Western Australia, low pressure in the dark shading shows the next cold front coming in. Windy, warm, nor'westers for August the 1st, but August the 2nd and 3rd sees that change coming through. One of a number of cold fronts that have brushed southwest Western Australia, Tasmania, and New Zealand's South Island in recent weeks. Let's kick off with the climate highlights. Sorry for all the, the words and the writing, it's like homework, and then the cool maps come afterwards, but let's just get through it. So the sea surface temperatures in Australia, second warmest in June since records began in 1900. There's a month delay on getting that information, so it's June, not July. In New Zealand, sea surface temperatures, which were pretty normal across summer, have been gradually going up above average over the last couple of months. And now we're actually seeing a strong marine heat wave. We'll show you the map in a moment. On land in New Zealand, July was a real variety. We saw in both of the main islands, places that were a couple of degrees above average and a couple that were below average. Same story you know, in both of those main islands. So a, a real variety of weather around New Zealand. In Australia, frequent cold snaps in the southeast, as many of you know, and also in that southwest corner of Western Australia. Plenty of snow on the mountains, and we've seen those inland frosts and of course plenty of uh, wind events all along the southern states. Now as far as the big picture is concerned, we're still in a neutral season in the Pacific Ocean. No El Nino, no La Nina. In saying that, some of the computer models around the world are hinting that we're kind of borderline uh, La Nina as we head in towards spring. That means a few more tropical lows might be possible, and we're seeing a bit of that at the moment, so worth monitoring. And on the other side, in the uh, Indian Ocean, their version of La Nina and El Nino also neutral, but again, may also be showing some changes going into spring, but for now, we're not focused too much on that. And in the Southern Ocean, it remains pretty stormy, but it's also very contained. It's not necessarily blasting up towards us like it was in the month of July, more likely brushing us. And this map really kicks it off. So let's have a look at where the air pressure is lying. So high pressure in the red boxes, low pressure, where rain, is, rain and wind is more likely in the blue boxes. So we do see some low pressure north of the country here. That low hasn't yet formed on this map around the Coral Sea, northern Tasman area that's drifting out here. So that's not around, but you can see the colder southeasterly wind going all the way inland. High pressure moving into South Australia from Western Australia, and behind it there is that next cold front. Plenty of stormy stuff, but it's well south of both of uh, New Zealand and Australia as we go up uh, into the first week. And around the tropics, also fairly quiet. There's been a lot of rain though around Vanuatu, Fiji, Tonga, those areas in what should be their dry season. So that's why we're curious about that chatter about La Nina. Not only that, jump over to the Indian Ocean here in week two, tropical low here, another low that's sort of mid-latitude, low pressure is basically forming again in an area where at this time of the year you maybe wouldn't expect it quite so much. And so the weather's always turbulent, you can always get a surprise but that's just showing up at the moment. So really, as we go into the second week of August though, around New Zealand and Australia, pretty settled still, a lot of high pressure. Uh, we do have 
a small bit of lower pressure, I guess, around the Coral Sea, the North Tasman Sea here. That's why you see a bit of a dip in the uh, isobars there going around the next big high coming in over Tasmania. High pressure around New Zealand, one of the strongest highs we've seen this year, potentially for the first uh, week or week and a half of August moving on through. And the next sort of low brushing South Australia while you're getting those cold fronts still coming through with thunderstorms and some windy weather, but nothing like the stormy stuff we saw at the end of July. And by the middle of the month, again, massive area of high pressure here, covering most of Australia and north of New Zealand going up towards the tropics, so they don't see quite as much wet weather. Although again, this dip around Fiji suggests there's a little bit of a pothole in the sky, if you like, where rain clouds can sort of fill in. Now, as you go further down into New Zealand, obviously low pressure here from the Southern Ocean, still dominant, and that is coming through. But I've got to say, this, this map here, going into the middle part of August, is looking, I hate saying this out loud, but I'm doing it now on a video, looks a little bit spring-like. Now, some years, I say that as early as the end of July, we see spring arriving from a weather point of view. This year, certainly there's more wintry weather around, but by the middle of the month, what, what makes me feel a bit more spring-like is all the westerly winds. So north westerlies coming into New Zealand, south westerlies blowing into Australia, high pressure coming back into western Australia, drying things down, dry, calming things down and drying things out. And so that just starts to look like spring, which you would expect by the end of August, but some years it can go through till September and October with a wintry pattern. So we're always watching that very closely. Let's have a look at New Zealand soil moisture levels, where they were to where we are now. Here is June, so obviously this part of the North Island, drier than it should be, Hawke's Bay in particular. Jump forward to where we are now, still the driest part of the country, and it's been that way now for a few months. So uh, look, not everyone in Hawke's Bay wants rain. If you live in northern Hawke's Bay, you're done with it. But this area here, sort of around Hastings, inland towards the hills, those areas are still a little drier than they should be. And so some rain in there would be good, but I've got to be honest with you, this map is a very healthy looking map. Now, uh, NIWA always delays rain data for commercial reasons at their end, which means this is not the honest picture at the moment. There will be some other rainfall figures to come in from the very heavy rain event that we just had in New Zealand at the end of July. So there may be some more blue around, certainly these northern and northeastern areas, but this is looking pretty, uh, pretty good. Canterbury also may be a bit wetter because of the very heavy rain that fell on literally the last day or the last two days of July. So we've seen some rain there. Let's have a look at Australia from a soil moisture point of view. Let me know about this map. It's the first time we've used it. It's from the Bureau of Meteorology. The areas that you see in the sort of orangey color up here on the scale, this is a root zone soil moisture. In other words, how dry is it under the ground where the roots take hold? And what you're seeing is a lot of that dry sort of conditions melting away disappearing as those rain events have come on through. So a lot healthier looking in the more populated areas. You're basically where you should be, smack bang on an average. Some areas are a little bit wetter, even parts of South Australia, which is a change from where you've been. So I think that's a pretty good map, and that's, that seems to reflect the comments I've been getting. Maybe some parts of inland New South Wales still a tiny bit dry, but pretty good map to see. Let me know if I'm wrong or right. I'd like to hear from you in Australia in particular on that one. Here is New Zealand's uh, uh, marine heat wave map. So I said before, we're into that strong area. That's an orange. So a lot of orange around the country. Uh, some areas in red like Stewart Island and around Taranaki, Waitomo, and up here around the far north. Those areas are going into the severe marine heat wave. That means it's much warmer than it usually is. If you want to go for a swim and get the normal temperatures for this time of the year, go for a swim in Wellington Harbour, Kaikoura, Round Banks Peninsula. Beautiful, cold water. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. This is the anomaly map. So this shows you how much warmer is it compared to usual. And this is where you start to see a lot of this, this shading here, which you don't really want to see in winter. So a lot of places are warmer than average at the moment. We've had a lack of really grunty southerlies in New Zealand this year. We might have had a lot of cold airflow, but it's not necessarily brought up from Antarctica with a massive gale force southerly, which helps to mix up the water a bit more. And we're seeing here some very mild conditions uh, getting up to a couple of degrees above normal. Here is the big picture, sea surface temperatures. So as I said at the start, Australia warmer than average, and it has been for a number of months actually for a year or so. 
But when you look at this mat, you can really see why. Because you sort of blur your eyes, don't worry too much about the detail, just kind of look at the general color. Here is the scale. Blue is colder, red leans warmer. So when you're into this sort of one, two, three degrees above normal, look how much of the southern hemisphere at the moment is in that category. So this means that rain, when it happens, is more likely to be heavy. That's what we've seen in New Zealand in the last few weeks, some very heavy rainfall coming through. We've also seen some energy thunderstorms around Western Australia. Uh, there's been the algal bloom problem in South Australia. Hopefully that might be easing a wee bit now with the stormy stuff that you've been getting. Think of the, the sea as like a bath. You know, you've got the hot water though at one end and the cold water at the other. You need to mix the hand in, otherwise you get a layer of hot on the top at one end and cold at the other. So that's what we want. Storms mix things up. So with all that high pressure coming through, I don't expect to see this changing very much. Here is the 16 day rainfall. Very obvious to see where that heavy rain begins and where the high pressure belts are. As we move through the month, maybe a bit more rain coming into the New Zealand area and a bit more over in western parts of Australia. But this is a, a 16 day rainfall outlook and it's not looking overly wet for most places. In fact, in New Zealand, it looks a lot more normal uh, where the west coast is getting the heaviest of the rain, where there could be over 200 millimetres there, parts of the North Island drying out, Hawke's Bay not necessarily getting a lot of rain, getting a little bit, but not a lot, and driest weather still in the southeast corner of the South Island. Over in Australia, dry for the top half, that's what you'd expect in the dry season, nothing too strange there. That rain around New South Wales, that is this weekend, the first weekend of August. And then we see the follow-up showers coming into Western Australia, 100 millimetres or more coming through some areas there, and a line of thundery weather or downpours popping up elsewhere. So I think it's a pretty good rainfall map. For those who don't want rain up around parts of Queensland at the moment, hello mango growers, that is uh, looking pretty good. For those of you in the south wanting some wet weather, you've got a bit more, but not necessarily a huge amount more. And most of the tropical stuff is north of Samoa, up around Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, off over towards Southeast Asia. All right, before I go, I did this last time. This time I'm gonna step off the screen and show it to you without me standing in front of it. And I've slowed down the animation for you as well. But this is a 15 day animation showing you basically what I just showed you, but in animation form, August the 1st to August the 16th. And I'll hit play now. But anyway, that is all from me. I'll see you again one month from now.